Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Instagram online conference, Marketing with Love, in association with ET Brand Equity. Instagram is a community that's upwards of 1 billion people strong. And this platform has enabled these very people to become closer than ever before with the individuals and things that matter to them most. This extends well beyond friends and family to now include personal interests, public figures, content creators, businesses, and brands. That's right, over 90% of the Instagram community follows a business, which naturally makes the platform a very cohesive uh, sort of backdrop for the partnerships between people, content creators, and lastly, brands to ultimately come alive. Which raises the question, what sort of outcomes move as a result of influencer marketing? Because influencer marketing has now become one of the most integral components of all marketing campaigns. So as consumers continue to crave authentic communication about the brands that matter to them most, with the people that matter to them most, what's happening is the implications and impact of influencer marketing is now more robust than ever before for businesses and for their bottom lines. To shed more light on the subject and share his take on how influencer marketing is now shaping business outcomes, please allow me to introduce our keynote speaker and the director and head of global marketing solutions at Facebook India, Sandeep Kushan. Hello everyone, uh, great to be here. My name is Sandeep Bhushan. I lead Facebook for Business in India. Uh, and we're privileged uh, to host 400 million Indians on our family of apps. Uh, and that include, of course, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Uh, and one of the pieces I do want to talk about today is the whole area of how Instagram is central to brands and businesses um, as we seek uh, to connect with consumers as they spend more and more time on mobile and digital uh, this year and we know further as well. Uh, today we'll talk about influencer marketing, uh, a topic that many of you have engaged with, uh, but there is tremendous amount of new news on how influencer marketing today uh, is ready to drive brand outcomes. Uh, and that's the topic we'll talk about today. Uh, so in the next few minutes, I'll give you a context uh, of Instagram and how uh, the platform today is the home for influencers and ready for business. Instagram now is home to a billion people, a billion people who come here to express themselves, uh, making Instagram really the home for visual expression, uh, but more importantly, also to connect with people and things they love. Uh, and Instagram uh, as an app uh, in our portfolio plays that critical role of connecting us to all of our passions and all of our interests, whether it's sports, music, uh, fashion, news, uh, and the width of passions itself is so wide because the community is so large at a billion uh, that every single interest today is served by uh, the Instagram feed and all of the action that happens on Instagram, which is brand action, business action, and a lot of action uh, from creators as they express themselves. On businesses, uh, in fact, Instagram plays a very critical role because 90% of people on Instagram follow a business, which means the ability of a brand to speak an authentic uh, voice every day to its followers on Instagram is unparalleled. Uh, and when we talk to these people, to these consumers, uh, they, they talk about uh, being interested in a brand when they see anything about it on Instagram. So 51 consumers, for example, uh, say that they're more interested once they see a brand. So massive following, but also massive intent to act when they see brands uh, on the platform. That's also mm -hmm. because there's a perception that we now see building for brands on Instagram. And our research tells us uh, that brands who show up uh, authentically on the platform are perceived, for example, 85% uh, brands are perceived to be popular, 83% uh, are perceived to be entertaining. So a fantastic space to connect to a billion people audience who are looking to connect with their passions allows brands a fantastic space for both connection uh, and expression. Uh, so that's 
the role that Instagram plays fundamentally for brands. Uh, and it's not a surprise. 95% uh, of consumers say they discover new products or services on the platform. Uh, and 95% have also said that they decide whether to buy a product or service basis some information received uh, on the platform. Further, not only is the action uh, that consumers take in their interaction with brands online, so for example, 80% uh, plus will end up going to a brand website or app, but even offline, 60%, for example, have taken that online journey offline by actually walking into the store of the brand they're engaging with. The fundamental of digital influence, of course, we are aware is very significant, especially this year. We've seen a massive spurt in digital influence uh, up to 20, 25% category after category. Mobile that's 70%, for example. Fashion is 60%. At that level of digital influence, platforms such as Instagram, therefore, at scale, are moving both consumer perception and action. Um, now, of course, within India, uh, as across the world, uh, we're seeing massive growth uh, and depth of consumption. And that's also happening because of the formats and the tools now uh, businesses, creators, and users have. Uh, users are expressing themselves, for example, through more and more formats. For example, Reels. Uh, Reels launched recently, and we know how Reels has taken off with massive adoption, uh, bringing both expression and music uh, in a snappy way that's today uh, possible on Instagram. Uh, if you look at creators, you've seen it, especially through uh, the lockdowns and the social distancing, the use of life, for example, for creators such as musicians to connect from uh, the safety of their homes, doing live music, for example, uh, a fantastic experience that built connect, but also at this stage of where the world is, also connected uh, with music, uh, with recipes, with stories across multiple, multiple uh, segments. And then of course, for brands, brands are able to express themselves through the feed and through the multiple options that there are, uh, again, whether it's through a story uh, and eventually uh, through filters and reels as well. So the whole area of expression uh, is very rich. And that's why you and I spend the time on Instagram connecting with the people, things, and businesses we love. Uh, one of the very interesting, therefore, aspects of Instagram is the authentic expression. Uh, and that's where creators stand out in their interaction uh, on the platform for sheer authenticity. Take the first celebrity that comes to your mind. And yes, you will have seen them expressing themselves or their professional work across platforms. But you go to Instagram to see what their authentically, uh, what their authentic life is, what's behind the scenes, what is some, what is the stuff that concerns them, uh, and no surprise. Therefore, this warm relationship is actually the starting point of the whole area of the relationship between creators, which eventually allows uh, for those influencers to influence brand outcomes as well. Sixty-four uh, percent people on Instagram today are on the platform to interact with creators. That's the scale of how impactful, therefore, the creator connect is. Uh, the question, therefore, is as business and brands, how can you connect with people on Instagram to take forward your marketing objectives, your business objectives? Fundamentally, therefore, the whole area that brings together the passions that consumers are chasing, the authentic voice of creators, uh, and uh, the fact that consumers care for brands on a platform allows therefore creators and brands to come together in a whole format uh, called branded content. Uh, the way to think of branded content is really the brand's objectives uh, with authentic influencer content coming together to take forward your brand communication. The most critical piece, of course, is the tools that are now available. For the longest time, the audience for influencers has been uh, their own create their own followers, uh, and therefore, when a brand interacted with creators, you actually just reached the creators' uh, followers. The possibility now with organic content and the tools that are now available is to actually take that authentic influencer content, but actually take it wide in reach terms to your target audience, and to that extent, therefore, 
make the influence of marketing an equal part of the whole marketing communication mix that you have. That reach, therefore, makes it central to the marketing discussion uh, as we build the communication play. And therefore, there is strong organic presence that your brand has today, which allows you to stay connected, keep the communication going. And then there's the ability to do reach-based planning and advertising, plus, of course, the whole area of branded content. So that's the full mix of what's possible today on Instagram uh, for business. And again, whatever the stage of the funnel we are talking about, which is inspiration, which is awareness, uh, but in the Instagram context, really inspiration. It is, I'm so excited with this new thing or information that I now see uh, that I want to go and act. And we saw consumers do act all the way to uh, conviction to purchase and post-purchase. And one of the interesting pieces is therefore at every aspect of the journey, the choice of both the brand asset or for example, the influencer can push uh, the consumer or support the consumer in the journey to go further. Now, influencer marketing has scaled over the last many years, but I think this year is disruptive for two reasons. One, consumers are socially distanced uh, and therefore they are seeking more voices of expertise and endorsement to allow them to take decision. That's therefore the phenomena of social distancing that has affected business fundamentally. The other, more tools and constraints on uh, in the real world in some sense, at the creator level has allowed them to go closer to their consumers uh, with expression, like we saw, for example, the piece of music. Put these two things together, influencer marketing, therefore, today is more powerful than it has ever, ever has been. Uh, and the proof of the pudding is business results. All of this is worth this conversation only because there are business results that brands have to deliver. Uh, and a slew of examples, uh, Hyundai Aura, that launched uh, with influencers, uh, a five-point lift in awareness, uh, or a Cadbury Silk, uh, or Puma India doing fantastic uh, creative execution uh, at the awareness stage, or an Oppo, for example, uh, driving consideration, which is partnering uh, through the funnel, uh, a three-point lift in consideration, uh, similarly from Cadbury Silk to Nokia, uh, and all the way to inspiring action uh, and examples uh, from categories uh, whether it's Sensodyne uh, or Cadbury Cocoa talking recipes. So a slew of examples across every part uh, of the consumer journey uh, now available to marketers uh, to drive this whole agenda. In a year where brands are stressed both for growth and for efficiency, here's a very rich play, therefore, uh, for brands to build uh, both trust and uh, salience but also drive action. So this is the whole premise, therefore, of the possibility of the scale that Instagram offer, offers, uh, the billion globally, uh, and the warm connects that are now uniquely possible on Instagram directly with the consumers, and of course, also through influencers uh, on Instagram, which makes Instagram a very interesting part of the mix uh, to drive business objectives this year and further. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep, for showcasing not just those use cases, but incredibly, you know, very inspiring, moving and convincing ROI driven examples of successful influencer marketing campaigns conducted on Instagram. And with that, we move on to our next speaker, who is an industry luminary, and he's deeply committed to purpose driven campaigns seems to have struck just the right balance between nurturing the consumer along the path to purchase while establishing an emotional connect. And this connect, of course, permeates to the creator community on Instagram as well. So with that, please allow me to introduce our next speaker, the Director of Marketing Shortlist with Mondelez India, Anil Vishwanathan. <laughs> I'm Anil Vishwanathan. I'm Senior Director of Marketing and Consumer Insights and Analytics uh, for Mondelez India. I think in Mondelez India, we've been collaborating with uh, Facebook and Instagram uh, for several years now. I think our experience with uh, Instagram has been uh, uh, very good. 
Uh, I think firstly, it's an evolving platform where we are seeing a great degree of engagement and a great growth of new users coming in. Specifically for the categories that we operate in, uh, in the context of food and snacking, uh, we find that Instagram is even more amenable uh, to our categories in the way we create our content for our brands. So as the brand challenge of building more engagement uh, comes alive, we found a very close role being played by content creators and influencers on the platform. I think one of the challenges, of course, is, you know, uh, being used to conventional brand advertising, you always fear to have as much of the brand in uh, the piece of content. Uh, while uh, in over a period of time, you realize that the success of a content creator and an influencer is really the fact that it's something which is authentic and real, that they are putting out consistent to their tonality, their objective, uh, and their pro their positioning. So how well can the brand uh, coalesce with the proposition of uh, the, the influencer and the content creator really becomes very pivotal uh, to the success uh, of a piece of content that a brand puts out. After a great run of success, uh, we've been able to uh, kind of pivot uh, Cadbury Silk towards a little bit more overt linkage with romance and, uh, you know, with our, with our new proposition of how far will you go for love. And when you look at a proposition like that, for it, for the, for the brand to really stand out in that proposition, that's where a content creator and influencer helps us because you're able to put out pieces of content in the space of romance, which stays true to the brand's promise without the brand being out there. I think it just helps us consolidate uh, that platform better. So that's one example where the brand challenge was engagement and landing a new proposition. And our experience is that Insta is able to do that uh, very effectively uh, with the use of create, uh, uh, content creators and influencers. And a very different and an alternate example is really, and that's where the power of Insta comes alive uh, very strongly, is really when you think about the bottom of the funnel. And when the objective is not just about engagement and I mean, awareness and engagement, but it is more about uh, eventual commerce. And uh, given that there is so much time being spent and there's so much engagement on the platform, one of the challenges that we had was how can we convert an engaging piece of content into something that the consumer can click and buy? And that's a very interesting, innovative experiment that we've been working with uh, Facebook and Instagram over the last six months. A call to action asset, uh, if uh, designed properly and if managed very well, for the backend logistics and the backend integration with the with the retail partner, we are actually creating an end-to-end -end solution for you know a problem that uh, all of us as brand marketers have been always struggling to solve, uh, which is converting a point of awareness and interest into eventual action. So those are the two examples of how Mondelez is working very closely with Instagram. Thank you. Many thanks, Anil, for sharing such a rich range of examples of how influencer marketing and creators are moving business. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to a speaker that has such a rich product portfolio that essentially resonates with all segments of the tech world. Please join me in welcoming a very special guest who's an industry veteran, senior vice president and head of e-commerce business with Samsung India. Ladies and gentlemen, Asim Barsi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Asim Varsi. I'm the head of digital commerce at Samsung India. Uh, you know, as a marketer, as a business head over here, uh, I must share a perspective that I think most of us have, uh, have experienced in our uh, businesses. Up until five years ago, uh, digital was the new caviar we were getting, uh, acquiring a taste for. Uh, cut to today, not only is digital mainstream, there is uh, uh, there is an aspect within digital which is all about influencer marketing, which is mainstream front and center in the way we approach our, our brand building and our uh, and our brand connect with consumers in India. And at, and at that, inside Samsung, um, in a very, very short and rapid amount of time, we have come, we believe, a long way in trying to build our digital prowess through influencers. In this regard, of course, we've been working with a lot of partners, content creators, uh, uh, platforms at that. Uh, no surprises, Facebook and Instagram have been, have been very, very close allies over the last uh, five to seven years of our business of digital marketing in India. And particularly through the Instagram platform in the last three to four years, of course, has been a lot about 
our content and continues to be so. But in the last year or two, uh, uh, the, the scale and the, the relevance and the impact uh, that we have built through Instagram and at large otherwise as well uh, in, the, in the aspects of influencer marketing, both tech as well as non-tech influencers has been enormous. Let me just share some perspective on this one a bit more in specifics. In the last about three years to four years that I spoke of, uh, no doubt we've, we've uh, funneled out a lot of content and a lot of evocative global international brand content, including a lot of local uh, uh, India-made content around our brands, our services, our technologies, our product lines, our people, our brand stories out there. Uh, and all of that has had a lot of impact in, in our business and brand building. However, in the last year or two, as we have invested and as we have worked closer and closer with tech and non-tech influencers, we have seen a clear tick up or a shift up in the kind of brand scores, the brand lift scores, our engagement scores, our translation to sales and we are able to measure and map that as well uh, uh, has been enormous and each of these indices when we compare versus content brand made content versus influencer uh, driven conversations and content uh, the indices are anywhere between 2x to 4x for all of these parameters that i just spoke of that's enormous uh, you know, another thing to add, and it's very, very specific to our category that we uh, uh, play within, which is uh, mobile telephony, accessories and peripheral products, including tablets and wearables in that, and beyond that into home appliances and television products as well that we have at Samsung. Uh, the role of, of a brand speak is very high, but in these recent years, the kind of credibility the connect, uh, uh, the engagement that influencers get to any brand conversation is, is of an entirely different order. And I think uh, it is therefore no surprise out there that not only has digital as a space uh, has, has grown and penetrated so, so rapidly and so vastly, it's within that the, the role in the sphere of influencers has taken preeminence that maybe if we were having this conversation as recent as two or three years back, uh, I would not have said any of what I just said to you right now. That's how, how dynamic and, and rapid has this kind of a change been witnessed in the last two years. An interesting and a very recent case study. We launched one of our newest smartphone models, one amongst the M series, our newest series at Samsung. In that, we partnered with Instagram and we worked on a program which was the Insta Masters program, wherein with, along with Instagram team, uh, their experts, their product leads, their tech leads, their platform leads we worked with, we got together about 150 micro-influencers, put them together in, in, a, in a physical and a virtual meeting along with the Insta team, where, where they were imparted a lot of perspective and ideas and, and, and creative uh, uh, suggestions and solutions on how to create content and how to create engagement through their content and how to uh, publish and promote their content. We even got into a, uh, uh, engagement with these, a handshake with a tech handshake with these influencers where we were able to tag and promote their content from Samsung's uh, side as well. Uh, very interesting. We got over a thousand pieces of content created by these uh, these uh, Insta masters that we worked with, and mind you, I can I, I I have no compunctions in saying that if we were to create it on our own, a thousand pieces of content, there was no way we were going to be able to do it in that kind of a rapid time. Uh, so not only did we have a lot of diversity of the Instagrammers. It was enormous volumes of content they created and even larger and, and, and better levels of engagement that they were able to get. Uh, a brilliant experience in our part. And I think that's, that's again, one of our best cases which we would build on into the future as well.
you for that incredibly comprehensive overview. I believe that the stellar lineup of speakers this afternoon has led us to collectively believe that influencer marketing does in fact deeply impact business. But to what extent? Well, to do a deeper dive on the subject, next I'd like to welcome a highly distinguished panel of domain experts and to spearhead that conversation, please allow me to introduce my colleague and senior editor with the Times Network, Sonali Krishna. A big hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this thought leadership piece on influencer marketing. This is the Instagram online conference, Marketing with Love, in association with ET Brand Equity. Now, over the next 30 minutes, we're going to be deep diving into a very important and emerging facet of marketing, which is, of course, using influencers to reach and move business outcomes. Influencer marketing, specifically on a platform like Instagram, has increasingly over the years gained prominence and several marketers, as of course, you've seen a few, have used this to move business outcomes and it's slowly and steadily becoming an important part of a brand's media mix when one talks of building brand saliency. Now, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen this area of marketing take center stage and gain even more prominence thanks to the several constraints that have been posed in front of us when it comes to authentic content creation. Today, I am fortunate to be joined by a star-studded marketer panel. And without further ado, let me introduce to you this very, very illustrious panel to take this conversation forward. Uh, let me start with Sandeep Bhushan, Director and Head of GMS Facebook India, Abhishek Ganguly, Managing Director, Puma India and Southeast Asia, Harish Narayanan, CMO Mintra, Anurita Chopra, Area Marketing Lead, Oral Care, GSK Consumer Healthcare, Dheerat Sinha, Managing Director, India, Chief Strategy Officer, South Asia, Leo Burnett, and Harish Bajur, Brand Strategy Consultant. Thank you so much, lady and gentlemen. Truly a pleasure having you right here in, your, in this Marketing with Love online Instagram conference in association with Brand Equity. So I'm going to start uh, with you, Sandeep, first for some context setting. Uh, and also some context on the whole evolution of the space. Now, we've all known celebrity endorsements now for eons, and influencer marketing seems to be a much more sophisticated and advanced avatar uh, of, you know, this celebrity marketing extension. The only difference being that the, the context of what is a celebrity has changed, uh, you know, in a large manner from what we used to know what defines a celebrity to now. Uh, my question to you is, if I had to ask you to jog your memory and go back five years and look at this entire space of influencer marketing, what constitutes an influencer, who becomes an influencer, and uh, you know, brands starting to partner with influencers to communicate, how is that landscape evolved? Hey, thanks, Sonali. Uh, and great to see uh, wonderful practitioners here. Look forward to learning from them. I think the critical point is interests, passions, and an intent to learn and be inspired. That's what's fundamentally shifted. Consumers, users on Instagram fundamentally follow passions and interests. That creates a warm space of engagement and an intentional engagement with the topics that all of us, and we saw the breadth of interest that we saw. That's a very big shift. It's not marginal, it's structural. I think that's point number one. And when we talk of a billion people following the passions, uh, two thirds of them uh, interact with creators, 90% of them interact with brands, right? The celebrity piece uh, and the creator piece further also lies on a continuum. Celebrities have been used broadly as salience and top of mind uh, creators. Deep engagement with the right expert influencers who we trust uh, the judgment of, that in fact moves consideration. So very distinct intent from consumers to engage, a very warm relationship between all of the folks on the platform uh, and the ability to move not just up a funnel, top of mind results, but actually drive engagement consideration for the brand because we're talking not just to buzz creators, but experts uh, creates a very different uh, set of opportunities. Fair enough. Uh, you know, let me come to you, Abhishek, uh, you know, as one of the world's leading uh, sports brand, uh, you know, with big Bollywood and cricket endorsers, uh, you know, you've always been at the helm of creative disruption. 
uh, you know, influencer marketing on Instagram is something that I think you have actually uh, done a deep dive into and gotten your hands dirty. So I'd like your perspective of, you know, bringing to the fore to our audience, uh, you know, what was the trigger to, let's say, partner with an influencer? How did you decide which influencer to partner with? And what was the brand challenge at your end? And what was the outcome of it? So Sonali, as a brand, we always believe that brand advocacy and word of mouth is critical for the growth of our business. And uh, having influencers and using them on a platform like Instagram is the digital uh, adaptation of the same philosophy. We in Puma India always have believed that we are a heritage brand with some great history, uh, but which operates in a digital mindset, digital first mindset in, uh, with regards to our commerce, with regards to our consumer engagement, and with also regards to um, our brand marketing, right? And influencers have definitely, if you see influencers in India, and you mentioned uh, how we have used that very effectively, it has got us, I would say, a global brand with but a context and relevance, which is very country specific, very India, uh, also very category specific. We are a brand which is as much into sport as we are into life. We are into, you know, fashion, lifestyle as well. And if, if you look at our choice of, of people we work with, the creators, the influencers, it can be a Virat Kohli, who, so who is probably, you know, has uh, 81 million followers on Instagram, uh, to someone who is also an expert in their own uh, uh, domain, might be a fitness and, uh, you know, influencer like uh, Nidhi Mohan, uh, who is who's probably has a, has a very core set of followership. And we've worked with them very, very uh, differently yet the idea is very similar that how do we create engagement which is which is authentic which is deep uh, sometimes informative um, and i think i would say that we have found it to be very very successful for us absolutely uh, moving on to fashion and harish uh, the question to you really uh, fashion is a big mover on instagram i mean you know i know so many people including me who uh, who follow you know, a diverse set of people on fashion. Uh, for, a, for an organization like yours, how, um, how difficult is it uh, and how strategic is it to actually identify uh, the right influencers to be showcasing, you know, uh, whatever, you, whatever your brand wants to showcase? Also, you know, this whole, uh, you know, difference between a celebrity influencer versus a, a micro-influencer and how do you toggle between that and what objective does each one really suffice? Sure. First of all, uh, thanks for having me here, Sunal. Uh, good to see some old friends on the panel. What influencers mean to Mintra, um, especially coming from a place of uh, leadership in fashion and lifestyle. Uh, influencers are one of the most important ways of telling our Mintra story, right? So we are a platform. So it also is about uh, telling the Mintra brand story, but at the same time telling the story of our partners, like uh, for example, uh, Puma, right? So they form a very, very critical part of the story. Um, and how we leverage these influencers is by making them uh, critical to the way we tell our story, uh, whether it is uh, uh, unveiling the latest uh, trends and uh, latest season of uh, fashion, or unveiling our sale events, uh, we make them a core part of it. We do we even do um, uh, we use them as models, right? So in the last uh, June end of reason sale, we had influencers who were models for us. So we work very very closely with influencers, and um, I'll answer your second question by linking to the first one, sure. which is uh, there is a continuum, right? Uh, there is a trust reach continuum. Let me put it that way. On one end, you would have your celebrities who have fantastic reach and they are also high on trust, but they are still celebrities. They, they, they are still a bit uh, far away. Um, on the other hand, you would have word of mouth, which is your friend coming and telling you, hey, you go try this brand on Mintra. Right? Or yeah, hey, you should go download Mintra and try it out. In between somewhere is an influencer who has more reach than your friend, uh, who tells you one-on-one -on -one word of mouth. But at the same time, you trust them a little more than uh, a broad-based uh, celebrity because you uh, there's, a, there's a bit more authentic because you uh, followed them on Instagram or any other platform. You went out and reached out to them. And that's how um, we look at the whole spectrum as well. 
uh, we work with a fantastic celebrity so we used to work with virat as well uh, we now work with uh, kiara samantha disha a uh, lot of big names um, in this uh, uh, festive season campaign but at the same time we work with thousands of influencers not hundreds not tens but thousands of influencers and the way we work with them is uh, like someone mentioned before me the expertise really comes through so if we are talking about shoes they will they, they will listen to a specific influencer if you are talking about uh, women's ethnic wear uh, the audience listens to a different uh, influencer and we are able to activate them at scale and uh, you would know that you know last year uh, same time we launched uh, the biggest uh, fashion reality show in the country which was the mintra fashion superstar and the entire concept was the hunt for the next big fashion influencers so we take influencers as a core part of our strategy and we don't not only want to be the 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 users of this uh, this platform but also create So I was saying, uh, uh, it, it's a big part of our story, and the way we uh, identify these influencers is how much of an expert they are in their own field, how relevant they are to the brand Mintra and the the brand partners that we work with, and how can we uh, activate them at scale, right? Uh, so that's those are the kind of filters that we would have, and so far uh, it's been a it's been a wonderful ride, uh, you know, with all the influencer communities uh, in the in the country. Uh, so. fashion superstar i spoke about end of reason sale also uh, we even started a small community of influencers within the mintra app itself it's called mintra studio so similar to what uh, sandeep spoke about uh, and how communities are coming together we are building uh, the community inside the app so that the connect between uh, fashion or consuming fashion content to clicking and buying is even uh, shorter so net net it's a lot of uh, things coming together for influencers for us and uh, definitely we look at them as one of the core critical parts of our story fair enough uh, coming to you anurita which is a completely you know uh, different category uh, and i know for a fact that you know sensodyne has has uh, you know entered the influencer marketing space and you've partnered with the likes of ranveer brar anaita dondi all of that i'd be curious to understand you know uh, and i had several more uh, influencers that you've partnered with I'd be curious to understand uh, how a brand or a product like Sensodyne, um, you know, is able to partner with influencers uh, and really move the needle. And what was that needle that that was moved for you in particular? Thanks, Anali, for asking a brilliant question. But uh, Sensodyne, as we all know, is all about uh, addressing people with uh, tooth sensitivity issues, and one in three people suffer from tooth sensitivity, uh, which means when you have a glass of cold water or a cup of hot tea, you will have uh, a sensation, which uh, completely it's, it feels like an electric current going right from your jaw to your to your head. Uh, if we go back before i answer your question uh, but uh, sensodyne has always been the beacon of authentic marketing uh, so if you remember the dentists who have always been for the last 10 years talking to all of you about using sensodyne those are practicing dentists and uh, so we we are one of the earliest brands who said uh, that the brand is the hero and the celebrity is actually either the endorser in our case the dentist or the consumer now comes your interesting question which is uh, how, how do we do this a how do we do it and why would we do it uh, now there is uh, what would trigger uh, the feeling of sensitivity in your mouth it would be food right and uh, and what would be that food it would be sabo food it would be cold uh, food or you know ice creams lollies a glass of cold water it could be a burning hot cup of tea uh you wouldn't want your tea or coffee cold right so that's exactly where um, you know and sandeep mentioned it earlier as well which is this year has especially been a turning point in uh, the space of digital marketing so uh, since dine in any case has been quite a you know a leader in the pack in in this space uh, so while it does look like toothpaste it does look like you know tooth sensitivity but here is is a brand which has been pretty much at the forefront of creating influencer marketing not just through consumers but through experts uh, which are our dentists then we said that okay what about influencer marketing and to me frankly 
um, you know platforms like uh, insta platforms like facebook are are the true test of and you know harish mentioned it earlier which is the influencer is lying somewhere between uh, a celebrity who is really out there and propagating a particular brand or proposition uh, but has lower credibility beyond a point because everyone does have a little bit of now question mark on celebrity advertising to cut to your 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 best friend here is a group of influencers and a large group of influencers who have credibility in the space that they're talking about uh, be it chefs in our case who know the foods that they are you know uh, whipping up be it actually today people sitting at home and whipping up their favorite dalgona or whipping up their favorite golgappe how many of you would have searched for that favorite recipe sitting at home these days because you're stuck at home and you have nothing better to do and how about therefore a brand talking to you be free of the stress of enjoying your favorite kulfi ice cold take it make it in at home take it out of that fridge and bite into it without a second thought and how about your favorite chef be it ranveer brabri or any other chef telling you about his favorite recipe and that's how we've carefully very seamlessly woven in the brand and it's called hashtag for the love of because hashtag for the love of kuchka or hashtag for the love of um, rasam or hashtag for the love of cold coffee why would you give it up why would you give it up uh, for uh, why would you give up that love of that that jalebi that you enjoy the most just because you have too sensitivity and why would you listen only to a brand and why would you only listen to a dentist why would you not listen to key influencers who have a huge hub and a huge amount of following on platforms like instagram them telling you wouldn't it carry far more weight so that's how we've carefully woven in uh, the 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 space of tooth sensitivity but the trigger of food and through a triangular you know connect of chefs uh, because to me these are lighthouse people to to me these are beacons of light who are really there they're out there and they have a circle of influence a sphere of influence around people who listen to them who watch that space who want to know more about them and the platform like insta and facebook gives us this wonderful opportunity to be able to ride on that platform and be able to connect to people in the authentic way that truly then uh, brings a circular sort of a marketing it's not a, a you know me speaking to you it's you and me interacting and that carries far more weight in today's world right let me uh, invoke the brand guru uh, and uh, get your view harish uh, you know what would you say are the important do's and don'ts brands should consider uh, you know while playing in in the influencer realm uh, what should they be very cognizant of okay uh even before i answer that question straight out uh, i would like to just make one point which is to say that hey listen uh, what excites me as far as instagram is concerned and what's happening around it the creator programs the uh, the influencer programs etc it's simply the fact that all of a sudden uh, we are moving we are at the tipping point of advertising moving from the aggregated format to advertising becoming disaggregated uh one advertiser one advertising agency five creatives that's aggregated advertising out here we're really talking about maybe 20000 creatives 20000 creators a content factory and that's disaggregated now if you ask me what is important not to be done what are the top 3 i would definitely say don't look like a brand because brands have hard stories a shoe is a shoe and i am not talking about sports shoes Uh, keeping abhishek in mind i'm talking about leather shoes you're really talking about a shoe is a shoe it's a hard story there's a hard brand proposition statement that needs to move it gets converted into an advertising proposition statement it gets converted into a creative one creative over and out not any more i think we're really talking about softening it all so the moment you soften it and the moment you hand over the handle of the creative not to one advertising agency but to 20000 creators what you're doing is you're trusting these creators you're handing over the gamma uh, gauntlet and out here it's important to soften the whole thing so point one is brands please don't look like brands uh, that is look more like the consumer i mean you know uh, look as a part of him get beneath his or her or their skin the second is uh, stay peer to peer do 
stay peer to peer because that's beautiful i think you know we have all realized that top down advertising works less and uh, peer to peer works that much more lateral speaking which is going on today uh, on instagram and a medium such as this beautiful thing to do and of course the third thing and this important thing needs to be listened to as we entering into the tipping point and that is don't cook kill the influencer goose or geese in this case uh, a bit too early okay <laughs> thanks arish thanks very very uh, articulately put uh, let me come to you dheeraj you know you have your years close uh, to a number of clients uh, you've also seen the way you know their mindset has also slowly moved has been moving over the years but of course moved significantly uh, in in the wake of the pandemic simply because you know creation was had just become so difficult what is in your opinion uh, you know the key differentiation when you are thinking from the prism of creating content from an influencer standpoint uh, as opposed to any other piece of content yeah i think the fundamental difference is in the notion of the brand itself right uh, the way harish pointed out that brand is not what you tell to the consumers today brand is what they make of uh from the various scraps of data that we give them right so if you have a collage view of brand that you're giving various scraps of data to customers and they build an image of who you are uh, right uh, and that's the difference in approach when we are uh, say conceiving of a television commercial it's broadcast it's it's, it's an image that you're building uh, but say an instagram is an extension of people's life it's it's real life right so you're weaving into the everyday narrative of people and the brand is becoming a part of people's everyday lives uh, right uh, that's the biggest advantage that uh, that an influencer marketing program kind of uh, allows you so for example uh, you know we did work for uh, uh, mobile shala was a platform we created for whisper uh, where we realized uh, that you know uh, in the pandemic the boys were getting all the privilege of online education in indian households and the girls one getting access to education and for whisper we launched this platform of free education called mobile shala but we got lots of influencers on instagram to popularize the idea of mobile shala and when a bhumi petnikar comes and talks in authentic voice uh, that idea kinds of reaches out uh similarly say for jeep which is a adventure brand uh, we launched this idea of indoor adventures right so we use the idea of instagram and we said uh, we we reach out to people to say how can you play with these stickers inside your homes and create adventures and we got mammoth response from them so you are talking interaction you are not talking information uh, on these brands right we just launched a campaign for spotify premium uh, where we enumerated nuclear right and his fan base and we created a piece of music which talks against advertising because a platform on on the spotify pm is non advertising uh, based work so across these brands you know you realize that we are able to get the brand out there interact with people uh, right build one on one uh, conversation and the biggest idea is that we are throwing out lots of pieces to people to put together to build a brand rather than telling them this is what my brand is about got it uh coming to a, a very important question that i think sandeep you should address uh is the way always talking about uh you know measurement metrics it's always uh you know something that's always a cause of concern for most marketers you know i'd like you to address what are the measurement metrics for influencer marketing and you know how does one know that this is you know impacting my business in a manner where i can scientifically go through that funnel and understand that thanks ali first again i continue to be inspired by the wonderful stories at facebook our privilege always is to put out our products so put out stories or live and then practitioners creators brands they tell us what can be so this again a learning session for me so thanks everyone for uh, all of the push uh, from this to puma i think we got a very large sales segment of categories covered uh, fundamentally influencers i think we should remember and if we can code is what influencing a business because influencers should influence attitude behavior whatever idea model you follow and therefore your business if you're not doing that none of this conversation is worth anything i just want to triple underline that every one of us is here because we have a business objective and like i mentioned in the other in the context of the keynote 
this year, if ever, top line, bottom lines expect us to push the agenda on both effectiveness and efficiency. Uh, and the reasons why this happens, uh, why the measurement will move, and I'll come to the way of measurement, is for the simple reason that we're talking of 400 million folks between Facebook and Instagram today, 70% of them digitally influenced uh, and connected to uh, the brands. I think the other piece is the tools that are available. The influencer marketing toolkit today, one of course is set of expressions. So a creator today is expressing when we said need for authentic uh, creation, it's about the use of the platform. For example, I go live. I am authentic. I am live. It's not a cut. I know it's live because the interaction is happening, right? You can't hide behind a second take, right? So tools such as that create that sense of I can touch and feel. And again, even celebs, uh, I'm a big Kohli fan, like all of the country Abhishek, and I would love to hear him the day he drops the two catches and the day he hits the super over single or the four, whatever it was, right? I want to know him. I want to hear him. So celeb as influencer is uh, authenticity on a celeb, pasted, you know? Uh, so I'd love to see that. Let's come to therefore, from the tools of therefore expression to the tools of uh, media planning. And that's where it becomes very sharp marketing business conversation. Uh, fundamentally, again, as we had said, the ability for a brand to take the reach of the influencer into the intended reach of the brand, that allows for a scaled outreach, outreach through an authentic slash expert creator doing it engagingly. So if your brand audience is 100 million or 50, 150 million, and you put creators and multiply their reach by this branded content tools reach, you're able to therefore access everyone. You put the same fundamentals of reach planning and frequency planning. In four frequency, you want creator one, creator two, creator three, as Anrita, for example, suggested that multiple creators, uh, all of them lined up. Once you get reach and frequency right, at the scale of your brand's objective, in an environment where consumers want to engage, equal to business results, there's no other formula for brand building or sale that any one of us have been taught in, whichever school we went to. And many of us here, certainly Anrutha and I went to the same school many moons ago. And therefore, measurement is central. And measurement is exactly the way we do any measurement for any marketing stimulus. Number one is assess it on its own merit. So brand lift studies, etc., where you measure a stimulus impact on an intent to purchase all the way to mixed modeling. So when Mondelez, for example, talks about successes and really grateful for all the work uh, Anil's team has been pushing, they go and measure offline retail sales through a Nielsen mixed modeling as structured and rigorous as that. And Instagram influencer or Facebook influencer is exactly one media activity along with TV print, anything else they do. And therefore, whether it is solar stimulus, you should get your brand lift or is it mixed modeling for sales? Influencer marketing should be put exactly to the test because all of these tools should not seduce us away from the fact that we are here every day and this year even more to drive our businesses. So that's the measurement fundamental. And I think certainly our platforms like all should be held accountable uh, for that. There are tools and partners such as Nielsen doing great work in helping us measure. Great. Abhishek, if, you know, taking a cue from what Sandeep said, uh, you know, requesting you to unmute your uh, button, uh, and a question to you being, have you actually tracked that? Have you done an influencer activity, uh, you know, and then tracked the kind of brand lift, uh, you know, uh, your stores are getting? Absolutely. You know, I think Instagram gives us the opportunity to not just look at how much awareness we are creating in the brand and even uh, put a metric to that but also very clearly look at, you know, what is the impact on the final transactions that we are having in our offline stores or on online stores, right? So this is, this is I think, the beauty of, of the platform for us because not only is it just the right platform for us where we have the creators with whom we target and our own, plat our own handle uh, making it interesting, uh, but we, we always track it. I mean, like in business, we are at the end of the day, it helps both sides, the brand uplift, because you know exactly how many conversations you have generated. You exactly know what kind of engagement rates you have uh, generated. You exactly know the reach. So it's very, very metrics based. And also when it leads to, you know, when we do, let's say targeted outreach using Instagram, whether it is a hyper-local outreach or it is a category or any kind of, uh, any kind of cut you use to target audience, do you exactly know what's the return that you're getting based on what, uh, what you uh, 
uh, entailed to do when you started with that program. So, I mean, uh, that, that's the heart of our, our approach uh, to social media marketing, to digital marketing, and very specifically to, to IG. Fair enough. Uh, you know, Harish, you know, how difficult is it for you uh, sitting there to, and deciding? Because, you know, there are so many more influencers who are born and, and many who have saturated themselves. So as a, as a brand that partners with several uh, influencers, you know, whether they're being celebrities or, you know, uh, micro influencers, how do you decide how much you have to keep going in terms of partnerships and how much you have to keep offloading to maintain that balance? The good thing about working with partners like Instagram is that they usually come with recommendations, right? So we can depend on them as partners to advise us in many ways. Um, what we also do, while it is dynamic, yes, there are a bunch of new influencers coming in every single day, but the ones that are big on the platform are only getting bigger, right? As we consume more content, as we use platforms like Instagram more, um, the, the ones who are big are becoming many celebrities in their own right. So for example, the ones that I used in uh, season one of Mintra Fashion Superstar, they are now many celebrities in their own right. Uh, so it is dynamic, yes, but in the uh, broader scheme of things, the people who we work with and are still happy to work with us and are growing with us, we continue to engage with them. The ones that are new and uh, who have uh, completely shaken up the space that we work in, say, fashion, then we, we definitely want to engage with them and try them out. So it's a, it's a very organic process, I would say. It's not something that we have to you know, put a formula and say the bottom 20% are out and then we pump, pump in new uh, influencers. It doesn't have to be that way. It's a very organic process. They have to like our brand. We have to like them. And then we work together. We find that uh, the, the tonality, the, the voice and the character and the brand promises match right? what we want to stand for as Mintra in terms of making fashionable access to everybody um, and how they talk about fashion and how authentic they are. The, this marriage happens very organically. And once it happens, then we partner for a longer period of time. Um, and that, that is not very difficult. We have partners like Instagram. We have other influencer management agencies who help us. So it's it's a very uh, well evolving ecosystem, I would say, all the way from uh, choosing to as uh, Sandeep spoke about measurement and uh, uh, and and reporting. It's evolving quite well and it's evolving quite fast. Sure, Anurita, uh, you know what you what would you say? is one of the hardest things, since this is a new space and we're all learning, you know, what's the hardest thing for a marketer to, uh, in this particular space, to ensure that, you know, you're constantly doing something new, innovative uh, and, and relevant and, 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 you know, don't keep repeating so that, you know, your, uh, you know, core constituency doesn't get bored because, you know, innovation is very key in such a vibrant landscape. Uh, what is that one thing that you think is, is most hard uh, as a challenge for you as a marketer? Sonali, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's hard, but um, I think it's going back to who we've been trained to be, which is marketers. And uh, as Sandeep said, that we started with the same school. We've been trained to keep our pulse to the ground. Now, keeping that pulse on the ground, say a couple of decades ago, was all about that creating that TV campaign. And, you know, that itself used to be this big thing. And it would take um, six to eight months to a year, perhaps, with rigorous testing, et cetera, et cetera. But the core philosophy was really uh, understanding what the insight is, what's working with the consumers. Now, imagine that moving at the speed of light. Yeah, because that's fast, um, changing faster than you blink your eye. So A, you're not creating a single asset. B, you're not creating the asset. You're just laying out an asset and it'll be co-developed by many other people around you. So, you know, stop owning it. Uh, stop being, you know, really territorial about it that I am the brand owner and therefore I will drive everything. No, because now you're literally laying it out a bit on the ground and uh, you're letting... Uh, in this case, influencers, but many others co-create along with you. Because when that person is, uh, is talking, speaking, creating, there are many others who are his or her followers who are co-creating along with it. It takes a different shape than you possibly 
imagined it to be when you first started out and that's okay so one you need to move fast b you need to keep your pulse and adapt faster three you need to have multiple assets uh in you know in your kitchen all the time it is not about one singular mega asset it is about multiple and four you need to let go of it you need to see what it evolves into uh chances are that what it will become will not be what you started out with in your head and that's fine so i think it's evolving i think therefore which is why i said that you go back to who you want it to be as a marketer which is uh, keep changing and keep your pulse to the ground just keep it faster well that's a great point yeah. uh, anurita let me take that yeah. to uh, the agency uh, so dheeraj really uh, you know getting in you uh, getting uh, you in here when she says that you know you've got to be open you can't be territorial you can't look at yourself as a brand owner and want to control all the strings how many clients would you say and i'm not saying specifically to just clients you work with but broadly wearing your industry cap how many clients have that kind of maturity i think i think clients are learning right i mean uh, clients are learning uh, uh, there is a tendency to control uh, can we ask uh, the influencers to, to to mention the brand more often we do get those requests as well but clients are learning especially clients who have tasted success have realized that it is not a function of Uh, putting your brand logo in every frame it is a function of engagement that you create so uh, in fact and 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 for agencies as well right for agencies as well to learn to be open to i mean a lot of our creative folks now love working with influencers because they they know that there's a vibe so the creative community also has extended itself uh, right so the agency could have also approached this from a perspective of territory but we are embracing it if we're saying we are more creative and and when you're doing a piece with nuclear you're jamming and doing that piece of music together right or we we launched uh, say herbal essences for png just on instagram right and we use this idea uh, that everybody using filters to enhance their pictures on on instagram and we said keep it real with herbal essences you don't actually need a filter and it was launched like a new filter coming on board uh, and and a lot of creative input actually came from the influencers as well so i would say that uh, clients are learning clients are uh, tasting success are easier to to let go uh, it's an exercise and it's a acquired taste i would say and agencies have learned as well of collaborating and enhancing and extending their creativity through influencers rather than uh, saying uh, i'm i'm better by myself yeah So, Harish, how do you see this entire space and gamut uh, evolve and become more sophisticated, uh, both via influencers and, of course, brands who become a lot more open uh, to letting their letting uh, you know letting some grip uh, and losing the reins and allowing uh, you know this partnership uh, of creativity to you know go on to the next level? How do you see this develop? well i see plenty happening and uh, plenty happening very very fast uh, firstly you know brand control itself the brand control is so so yesterday uh, brand managers uh, brand owners need to wake up and say that hey listen guys uh, that was yesterday and today and tomorrow is about a different uh, era altogether and i will let go and let go with some degree of control hopeful control now if you look at um, you know medium such as instagram there's going to be plenty of change and i don't think mediums such as instagram are going to look the same way they're looking as of today brand gaming for instance that's big stuff coming up ahead of us so if you really ask me um, you know mediums which are so within your palm which is there on which you are 24 by 7 like instagram you're going to act beautifully uh, we have uh, you know a theory whenever we do digital advertising and digital marketing Uh, we typically call it the nta moment you know the it's is the nudge to act moment the nudge to act moment is when in that nanosecond something comes up cadbury silk has come on and there hunger has happened and you have actually gone and clicked on an order now that is the the stuff that we are going to witness ahead of us very very fast bleeding edge cutting edge and the beauty of mediums such as instagram Uh, which i prefer instagram uh, uh, to facebook for instance because i say if facebook is filter coffee instagram is instant coffee and the i gen the you know generation which is impatient 
really is looking for stuff like Instagram. What will happen out here is we are really talking about Instagram having the ability to cater to lowest common denominator consumers, middle common denominator consumers, highest common denominator consumers. No one medium could do that before. When we would go to an advertising agency, get an ad done, that was difficult because, you know, it appealed to everybody. And guess what? Most of the time, my advertising would be lowest common denominator advertising. Not anymore because I've got 20,000 creators and uh, the medium is running away. So I see a lot of excitement. Uh, the marketeer, the last point is the marketeer who does not look like a market marketeer. The brand which does not look like a brand. The brand that looks like uh, yet another human being out there. The marketeer hopefully also looking like a human being. Well, I think uh, the task, uh, it's quite a mammoth task for marketers at large. It cut out for themselves going forward to you know, release control, not look at themselves you know, as brands and have their logos everywhere. I think it's a, it's a long and arduous road, but I think uh, the mediums are fast changing and so are marketers. And with that, I'd like to thank uh, this illustrious panel for their time and sharing with us all these immense insights and case studies. And uh, once again, more power to you and more power to uh, the marketers right here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sonali, and to all of our panelists. I believe that I speak for everyone in saying that they shared such a rich range of insights and anecdotes around influencer marketing from both their personal and their professional journey. And with that, the Instagram online conference, Marketing with Love, in association with ET Brand Equity, comes to a close. Thank you for tuning in and for logging in. We'll see you next time.